Executives in the federal government can earn over $200,000 a year. On top of that, many of them receive generous bonuses in the five figures. But a lot of people, they don't know how to get that type of job. They don't know how to become an SES. SES stands for Senior Executive Service. And if you are considering being an SES, you have to understand that your background doesn't necessarily matter that much. It could have been private sector. It could have been military or federal government. What you did in the federal government, you can make impacts at different levels in different ways. However, the application process is completely different. You will be focusing on the five ECQs, and here they are. You have to type up your success stories to meet each of these ECQs from the last 10 years. For each of these ECQs, you should have two stories. So five times two, that's 10. You should have 10 stories in total. Every story should be one page. So that's 10 pages, 10 pages to cover the ECQs. Now you have to understand there's a difference between leadership and management. With management, you're talking about organizing, people, maintaining, things like that. But with leadership, you're talking about innovation. You're talking about creativity. And when you're looking at SES positions, when you're writing your ECQs, you need to focus more on the leadership. Also, ECQ should be in the C car format, which is challenge, context, action, result. That is the framework of your success stories. And as you're writing it, you're not writing about what the team or what the organization did. You're writing about what you did. So you started off with I, I accomplished this. I maintained this, I created this program. Now, people in the military, they usually have a hard time about writing I statements because everything is about the team. So we say, we, we did this, we did that, the team did that. You don't wanna do that. And if it helps you out, write it however it comes naturally to you. And then after you finish writing it, review it, edit it. Anytime you see the word we, strike it out. Replace it with I. Obviously, you also wanna remove any and all acronyms from your success story. Think about this question. What makes you unique or special? What experience do you have that makes you stand out from other people? The first ECQ is leading change. You wouldn't just talk about a time that you did an action and a result occurred. No, you want to focus on something where you made an impact, a change in that organization. So the organization shifted how it does business and it was long lasting change. Another way you can think about it is something is wrong with the world. Something is broken with the world. And you put your superhero cape on, you go out there and you fix it. And now everything is right again. You made the impact to solve the issue and you changed the course of the organization. Keep in mind your ECQs, they have to be certified by OPM. The review is made up of existing and experienced SES candidates. So you're not gonna have anybody that's a fresh SES sitting on that review panel. And after the second failure, if, if the review results in a failure of your ECQs, you will have to wait an additional 12 months before you can submit them again. If you are in the federal government already, many federal agencies, they will host webinars. They'll do it live and then they'll have some pre-recorded webinars. And usually it's like a series of five. So each one of these webinars, they'll focus on one ECQ. So they'll get down deep, they'll give you examples. Sometimes they'll have SESs come on and explain to you their experience and how they were able to attain their position. One thing they do stress time and time again is the experience that you're putting down. Is that experience executive level experience? Now, there are times where you were a GS-13, let's say, or you were a GS-14 and you did something. And just because you did it doesn't mean it's GS-13 experience you achieve something to the extent where it can be viewed as executive level experience because of the impact it actually made within that organization. Many people will actually start writing their ECQs long before they apply to be an SES. So you could be a GS-12, GS-13 and realize, hey, you know what? That's a goal that I wanna pursue. I see myself in that position in the future. I wanna to aspire to that. And then once you start having those thoughts, Go ahead and start writing your ECQs. Have someone review it, preferably in SES. There are also some companies out there where they will review it and edit it for a fee. There was one at SES I was speaking with, and that's exactly what he did. He paid a company because he viewed it as an investment. Now, 
Should you do that? That depends on your situation, right? Aside from ECQs, there are also professional technical qualifications, which are PTQs. These need to be addressed in your resume. As far as your resume length, I would keep that at five pages. Five pages or less, because you already have the 10 pages of ECQs. So that's a total of 15 pages that someone is gonna have to review and then qualify you on. If you are in the government currently, I would look at, in addition to preparing your ECQs, look at leadership courses that they have available completely free of charge. Also try to get selected to go to the Federal Executive Institute, which is in Charlottesville, Virginia. Keep in mind that you can sometimes jump from GS-14 to SES, but more often than not, they're looking for people at the GS-15 level. Now, like I said earlier, you don't have to be a GS anything. You could be coming from the private sector. You could be coming from the military. Usually from the military, what I often see are full bird colonels, which is an 06, or flag officers, which is your general officers, your one star, two star, three star. With SES positions, you have two categories. You have your career SES and you have political SES. Now, for some people, they could become an SES quicker if they go the political route. Now, you don't have to start off as a political SES. What some people do is they use Schedule C. Schedule C enables you to get into the government as a political appointee at like the GS-12, GS-13, GS-14 level. And then from there, you're kind of tied to the presidential administration. So right now it's President Biden. It could be someone new in the future. And if you want to work underneath that administration as a political appointee, you can apply. But keep in mind when you apply on the website, I'll leave a link down below to the website. They ask you questions like, what is your political affiliation? Now, I believe that one's optional, but I think it's something they might pay close attention to, right? They'll also ask you a lot of questions about your, your background, your, and there'll be a place where you can attach your resume and compete for those type of positions. All right, so if you're looking for federal government employment and maybe you're not ready to jump into the SES right now, you just want to be a regular rank and file government employee, GS-12, GS-13, something like that. If you wanna learn how to do that, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.